Hello again. Um, right, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try and use exactly what we've just done using my Arduino Uno, but using the Nano instead. If you remember, the Nano is a smaller version of the Uno, but we think it has got enough computing power to do exactly the same thing as the Uno. Um, if you're looking at this, you might think, well, how do I plug all my cables into that? And um, what I've decided to do, which I think is probably the best way, is you just get this little carrier and that's got these screwing terminals on on both sides. And if you notice that the pins on the, it says TX1 on there, they should match the pins on here. That says TX1 on there. So that goes in there and therefore that will be it. So I shouldn't have any trouble. I'm just gonna upload the, the program, the sketch as they call them. I'm gonna upload the sketch into this uh, you notice this has got a different USB. I think it's um, a small USB B, is it? Whatever it is. So different cable to the Uno, but pretty much the exactly the same process. Just a quick quick heads up here. Um, I've noticed that I had trouble trying to load a program onto my Arduino Nano, um, and I've looked up a solution and finally found one. Um, just in case yours doesn't upload, it just carries on for like two minutes and then says it can't upload. What I found the solution was in on my my one anyway. Go to tools, and then go to processor, and then select the old boot load, old boot loader. Um, it was set to this for my Uno, which I probably will set it back, I guess. But that seems to have solved the problem. So now let's see if I can load up my signal control. Uploading. Good. Okay. That's solved that. So exactly the same as before. Um, I'm going to use my little my little chart here to tell me which pin for which cable. Um, and actually, I notice on here it's got um, it's got a five, six, and seven. So there's three more pins on here. Okay, well let's get to it.
Okay, so that's done. Uh, now all I need to do is collect all my grounds together, these ones, uh, collect all my five volts together and use my breadboard to, um, to add them back into the board. Right, so I should have nine grounds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good, and three, five volts. Excellent. Right, all I need to do now is plug the the grounds and the five volts back into the board. Might as well use a black and red to try and keep it sensible. Black for ground. I just need to, there's a ground there, so that can go in there. Like that. And finally, my five volt supply, which goes in there. And there's a five volt. There we go. Looks grand. Looks fantastic, doesn't it? Okay, so um, what do I need? I need power now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just just to prove that this can run off of something other than the computer. I'm just going to use my battery power pack and a USB cable, which I'm now going to go and find. Just one tiny little thing before we do anything else. Uh, I did notice that um, there is a potential issue where you are setting all this up. You might think you've got something wrong. In fact, you haven't. And I found this on mine. What I, have, what I found is, um, you know, I mentioned about the infrared sensors here. They, they show a little light, little light there when it's detected. I was having trouble trying to get the signals working previously. And I noticed that the two light, that little lamp was on permanently. In other words, it wasn't a fault with the system. It's just that this thing was continually detecting. Um, and that can be caused by a lot of ambient light, e.g. light from outside or light from your room, whatever. So if you do see that light on permanently, then you need to use this little adjusting screw here to, to lessen the sensitivity. So it's just a problem that you might come across and thinking, I can't see what the solution is. Just double check that there aren't two LEDs on your sensor because that's the problem. OK, let's carry on. Right, I've plugged in the USB cable. Uh, if this goes to plan, what we should have is our startup sequence of lights and then three greens. So plug it in now. Excellent, that's good. Uh, and just a quick test, make sure this is all working OK. Yeah, brilliant. So it looks like the Arduino Nano is perfectly fine for running this uh, this program, which means obviously if you have the Nanos, you can use them. And I think they are cheaper than the um, than the Unos. And you've got the advantage of using one of these these uh, terminal block things. It's a much more solid connection by screwing in the terminals rather than using the little push-in pins. So that's good. Happy with that. Good test. Right, we move on. I think ne next what I'm going to do is uh, have a look at the circuit diagram I used when I did my original signal out using the Everar junction method and see if I can configure this Arduino to run with the original um, infrared sensors that I used in my track. See you then.